Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. And today's resurrection is this 1952 Schaefer Craftsman Tip Dip Touchdown Fountain Pen. I nearly missed this beautiful pen when I was antiquing with my wife near Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario last July. There was a row of Schaefer student pens and I already have two or three of those, so I passed this particular cabinet by. The shop owner asked if I had looked closely and actually seen this pen. When I looked again, I saw the gold clip and I pounced on it. And it turns out this pen wasn't actually dead. I'll say it was just comatose and needed a bit of TLC to get it working nicely again. So I breathed some life into this 71 year old Schaefer touchdown, polished it up, and it is now not only breathing and beautiful again, it writes very nicely as well, indeed. So let's take a look at what the pen looked like before and after its restoration right now. Arguably one of the world's most complicated fountain pens, the Schaefer Touchdown Snorkel was Schaefer's ingenious answer to the clean filling of a fountain pen. When you turned the knob on the touchdown filler, it extended a tube through the middle of the feed. You only needed to dip the tube in the ink to fill the pen and the tube retracted after filling. So there was no ink residue on the nib to clean with a tissue. Unfortunately, the snorkel coincided with the innovation of the cartridge filler pen and the rising popularity of the ballpoint by the end of the 1950s. And Schaefer's snorkel was also very expensive compared to the normal fountain pens of the day. Schaefer didn't want to leave those with meager means behind, so they introduced an innovation to the budget line Schaefer Craftsman and Schaefer Cadet models. They already had feeds with holes in them to accommodate the snorkel too. So they just made the Craftsman and the Cadet models with the snorkel type feed, without the snorkel. So you only had to dip the tip of the nib up to the snorkel hole and the touchdown filler drew up ink normally. The Cadet had a plastic barrel and cap where the Craftsman had a stainless steel cap. Since Schaefer Canada and Schaefer Australia tended to do their own thing, what I have here is an upscale Canadian made Schaefer Craftsman tip dip touchdown filler with a stainless steel cap but also with a gold filled clip and a Schaefer number 33 14 karat gold nib. Overall the pen is slender and short but posts very well and is nicely balanced in the hand and plenty long enough to write with comfortably posted. From the top we see the bullet shaped top of the cap and then the gold filled clip is very usable and has Schaefer's deeply stamped into the length of it. The cap has widely spaced engraved bands and is flush with the barrel. The injection molded light gray plastic barrel is straight to here where it begins to taper down to the seam between the blind cap and the barrel. And the barrel has W.A. Schaefer Pen Co. of Canada, Goderich, Ontario and made in Canada lightly stamped into it. And the blind cap has some lines etched into it to help with gripping the blind cap when turning it. You unscrew the blind cap and the touchdown compression tube slides out. I'm not going to slide it all the way out because this is full of ink, but you slide it all the way out, put the nib in the ink and push down the touchdown filler and the tube compresses the sack inside the barrel and at the end of the travel of the tube the compression is released, the sack expands and sucks up ink. And a couple of strokes is the charm with this thing for a full sack. Well, that's what she said. Get that ugly thing out of my face. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> the cap unscrews with one full rotation to reveal the ribbed for your pleasure black plastic section and the number 33 size 14 karat gold fine nib and black ebonite tip dip feet. I'll get a close up here so you can see that snorkel hole. And here is the nib that says Schaefer's made in Canada 14k 585 for the gold content and number 33. And the nib unit unscrews for replacement or maintenance. Schaefer was doing the same thing as the very popular Estabrook J model pens that had a huge range of available screw in nibs for their pens. The barrel unscrews to reveal the chrome metal sack protector that controls how much of the sack will contract and expand. And the section has got some really nice ribbing that gives you a nice grip on that section. 
I find this pen a bit slim and small for my grip, so I grip it up further back on the barrel here, but rest the section on my middle finger. The inside of the cap shows a plastic liner that helps seal the nip. The cap posts deeply and securely, and the pen is very, very comfortable and well balanced in the hand posted. Unposted, it's still long enough to write with in a pinch. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the 1952 Schaefer Craftsman Tip Dip Touchdown with a circa 1960 Schaefer Student Pen, a 1940s Esterbrook J, a 1947 Parker 51 Demi, and a 1960s Parker 21. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Of course, the Parker 51 Demi is the shortest of the group posted. That's to be expected. And the Esterbrook, the Parker 51, and the Parker 21 have yet to be restored. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. And the Schaefer and the Parker 51 Demi are about the same size unposted. The Schaefer and the Parker 51 both have 14 karat gold nibs where the rest are steel. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the 1952 Schaefer Craftsman and it has a 14 karat gold fine nib and this is a tip dip touchdown filler And let's check the wetness. I was very pleased with this nib. It's very, very wet indeed. And it is very smooth with some good feedback. If you like feedback, this pen is very nice. That's that toothy feel where you can feel the nib on the page. And with line variation, it is not a flex nib. It is a vintage 14 karat gold nib that has a lot of bounce to it. Let's close up on this and you can see that bounce. It's very nice. And the ink, of course, is what else? Waterman's Serenity Blue. People do ask whether you can use something other than Waterman's Serenity Blue or whether the other Waterman's colors are as safe as Serenity Blue, and they certainly are. The Waterman's Mysterious Blue is very nice and the Waterman's Black also, but I tend to like this blue color. And this nib makes a 0.5 millimeter line on my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below and that makes it a western fine or a Japanese fine to medium and for our quote and for some reverse writing it's fairly scratchy that can be polished out if you wanted to it's a lot thinner and a lot drier. And for some quick writing. Yeah, no issues at all. That's just a very, very wet feed. So what are my thoughts on this pen restoration? Well, they should all be this easy. This pen wasn't really actually dead. The sack has been replaced recently. I'd say in the last 10 years. The nib required some polishing and some adjustment to make it write well, but those adjustments were minor. The cap polished up very, very easily, and the barrel had some abrasions on it that were relatively easy to buff out. I won't be keeping this pen in my collection as it is a bit 
on the small side for my grip if you're interested in purchasing this pen just email me at inkquiringminds at gmail.com for information on how to buy it from me i'm selling it for 75 dollars us plus shipping and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and you can join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month and i guarantee i'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote I made this.